Hello everyone, I am Muskan Modgil and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's been around one and a half months that we have finally started our offline classes and honestly it feels so amazing to be back on campus. I have started my third year at veterinary college and it is the year when we are officially introduced to the clinical subjects. This year we will be studying seven subjects in total out of which two are exclusively practical based like they do not have any theory included. In this video, I'll be sharing my first clinical experience at my college veterinary hospital. So let's get started. Now I've been at my college veterinary hospital before because there's no such rule that you cannot enter the hospital before your third year as long as you maintain the discipline and follow the code of conduct. But I had never seen so many cases up close. I had never before went through the patient's hospital card. I had never stayed alongside the animal until the end of the treatment. So it was quite a lot for me to process and things did not go as I expected. After 1.5 year of online classes and having almost no contact with the campus or the veterinary hospital, I was so excited to finally visit the clinic again and go through the cases and actually be able to participate in the process. On my first day at the clinics, I went through seven cases in total, out of which I'll be describing a few in this video and just sharing how the experience went and how was my reaction to the whole thing. Visiting the small animal section of our hospital is my absolute favorite because I just love small animal practice. So I was really excited to know more about all the cases that we had that day. But here's when the things got serious. Out of all the cases that we had in our small animal area, one of them included the case of 11 months old Pomeranian female dog. She had been diagnosed with canine parvovirus and to all the viewers watching this video who know actually what parvovirus is, must also be aware that how hard it is for a dog. Moreover, the prognosis is not very good unless there's proper treatment given. Since we are in the very beginning of our third year and the clinical atmosphere is very new to us, we are not allowed to talk in details with the owner lest something must come out of our mouths which is not accurate and may lead to misinformation to the owner. So I just went to the table beside where the patient was lying and I grabbed her hospital card to go through the details and I was really really shocked after reading the case history. The dog, as I said, was 11 months old, but she has up till now not received even a single dose of any kind of vaccine. For those of you who have a pet dog at home or are in general aware about dog keeping, you must know that how critical it is to follow the vaccination schedule in the growing months of your puppy. And that female dog, she is 11 months old already and had never received any vaccination, any important vaccination. The prognosis was not so good and the disease was already at its final stages. I was so heartbroken, like for a moment in my mind I was blaming the owners, like why do you keep a dog when you are not fully aware about how to raise it? Why are you not taking care of all the vaccinations, the deworming schedule and everything? So once I had gone through the case history and was aware about the condition, the whole situation, I moved on to the next patient. 2.5 years old, the same case, she had not received even a single vaccination so far. On top of that, the owner had done her last deworming around 7 to 8 months ago. She was suffering from anorexia and had been passing bloody stools from the past few weeks. At present, it's been around a month since I've started regularly visiting my college hospital. From my observation so far, I can say that around 70 to 80 percent of the patients, the dogs that come to our clinic, they have not had any kind of vaccination in their whole lives. Some dogs are even two to three years old and still not received any vaccine. I have personally had three dogs so far at home and we were always very conscious about their deworming and vaccination. So I was already aware that there's a whole schedule that needs to be followed while we are raising a dog. Ultimately, I had a notion that all the pet owners, all the dog owners are 
aware about the vaccination schedule and all the pet dogs are already vaccinated. But once I started visiting the clinics and once I see the actual scenario, it has really shattered me. I really don't know what else to say, but there's another case that I want to discuss with you today. So after the small animal section, I visited the large animal area of the hospital. So there was this cattle around four years old and she had stopped conceiving at all. Like she wasn't fertile anymore. On top of that, she had really, really bad infection around her genitals. Once the patient got discharged, the professor who was assisting us that day, she narrated the whole incident. She told us that during the previous pregnancy of the cattle, the animal had suffered from a really serious uterine prolapse. Now, if you are not aware about what uterine prolapse is, it is when the pelvic floor muscles get weakened to a point that it can no longer hold the uterus inside the body. So it gets projected outwards. Now, this could be due to a variety of reasons. In the case of the kettle that we are talking about, it was due to constant pressure in the abdominal area. Now, what the owner did was that instead of taking her cattle to a well-qualified veterinary doctor or a veterinary hospital, he took it to some local person in the village who claims to be a qualified veterinary doctor, which clearly he was not. Now, don't get me wrong at this point. I am not at all pointing out the people who do diplomas in veterinary science or veterinary medicine instead of going for a five and a half year full-fledged degree course. However, there are so many loopholes in veterinary practice that sometimes people who have not even done any kind of diploma or any kind of course, they work for a few months or even a few weeks with a well-qualified veterinary doctor and then they start giving services to the people in village. Coming back to the case, so what the person did was he forcefully pushed back the animal's uterus and he stitched the whole genital area. I was literally shocked. I was literally in goosebumps when our professor was narrating us this incident. So what happened during the animal's parturition was that the temporary stitches, they opened up. They caused infection in the uterus of the animal. The infection was so severe that it could not be controlled. Even after so much, the owner did not feel the need to contact a proper qualified veterinary doctor or contact the hospital. What he did was again took it to some local veterinarian, the person who claims himself to be a veterinary doctor. He just then gave some random antibiotics to them, uh, telling that it is just a bacterial infection. You give these antibiotics and your animal will be fit. Few weeks later when the infection just kept on growing and the animal showed no signs of improvement, it was then when the case was brought up to a proper hospital. By that time the animal had already turned infertile and it was no use to the farmer anymore. The bitter truth that I have learned about veterinary practice by my experience in the clinics is that there are two aspects of treatment. The first where you are emotionally attached to the animal, you are ready to go any means to have the animal treated. The second aspect is when you are not actually concerned about the welfare of the animal, but your main focus is the business, the profit that the animal is giving you. The, considering both the aspects, the farmer had suffered a huge loss. The animal was no longer productive and so no longer useful to him. So after completing my rotations for the day, I went back to hostel and I literally had a mental breakdown. I was so stressed. I had never felt so helpless before. There were a lot of mixed emotions. I at one point were blaming the owners for it, but I was also blaming the amount of ignorance we have in case of animals and their upbringing. We never settle for less in case of humans. We make sure that we are contacting the most qualified doctor or we make sure that we are going to the best hospital that's available to us. That day I made a note to start advising people at least the people I know or my family members to always visit a hospital or at least check what veterinary doctor are you going for before you get your animals treated. There is still a long way to go. There is still a lot to learn and this one month exposure has definitely motivated me to work harder and just keep believing in myself. 
that was all for the video guys thank you so much for watching do let me know in the comments below if you want me to share more such cases in future before you leave make sure to like and subscribe to my youtube channel if you are new thank you so much for watching yeah.